The next section we're going to do is aldehydes and ketones. So we'll start with aldehydes. Um, and so aldehydes are right here. And if you notice, they would do three carbons in a row. So they would call it propane. And then they dropped the E, just like normal. And they added AL ending. But if we look at the functional group for an aldehyde, take a look. It is the functional group for an aldehyde is this entire thing right here. So since it has a carbon, double bonded to an O and bonded to an H, it cannot go in the middle of a chain. In other words, in order to be in the middle of an extended carbon chain, you're gonna need to have a carbon on one side and a carbon on the other, like a ketone. A ketone is somewhere in the middle because R and R, R is the carbons. This one only has one R. So what it's saying is it has to be at the end of the chain. It's never going to be connected because it's got a carbon on it already. It's never going to be connected to, it's never going to be a branch, or at least I should say, in our world, it will never be a branch. And so this is telling us it's going to be at the end of a chain. So since I always know its location, it never needs a number. The key with numbering is you have to know if there's more than one version. And if you can figure out if there's more than one version, then you need a number. If there's only one version of this molecule, then the numbers are unnecessary. It's like being, uh, let's say, you know, you, uh, you had your own street, right? And you were the only house on the street. Well, you don't need a house number. You're the only house on the street. So like if I won the lottery and I bought my own street and I put one house on it and I said, okay, I'm going to name this house Castle Learning Avenue. And all of a sudden I'm the only house on Castle Learning Avenue. I don't need a house number. I say, just deliver it to the house at Castle Learning Avenue. I'm the only one. If I were to get a neighbor, now all of a sudden we need to be numbers one and two, and so now you need numbers to differentiate between which house it is. It's the same way with here, You only uh, with these problems. You only get numbers if there's more than one version. So the one that they named, it was three in a row. They added an AL ending. So I'm going to uncondense it. I'm writing this extra H in. Normally it wouldn't be. It would be just left off, just like all the other H's are. I'm writing it in just to make it a little bit more obvious that it's part of the functional group. Um, and I want you to do that as well. So now we're gonna name the next two. So think about it. One, two, three, four, five. Five carbons in a row. If these weren't here and it was just five carbons in a row, all single bonds, it would be pentane with an E. Since it's a aldehyde, pentanal, done with the name. No numbers ever. It can only be at the end of a chain. It doesn't matter if it's on the end of this side, because I would call it, this is carbon one, or if it's on the end of this side, that's carbon one. It's on the end, no matter what. Four in a row. It would be butane, B-U-T-A-N-E, butanal. Condensed formula. That's how they condensed it on um, table R. That's how I want you to condense it. There is another way to condense these. It's much more complicated, and depending on which one came first, the O or the H, it would mean very different things. So don't ever attempt to do that. Condense it the way they do it on table R. Next one. Done. Okay, ketones. So if we look at ketones, they are in the middle of the chain. The way I can tell it is because it's an R and an R. I can also tell from here because they give me five in a row and the double bonded O, which is the functional group. I can tell right here, that's the functional group. It's gotta be, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be on the end, but by saying R and R, what it's saying is it has to be in the middle because if it were on the end, it's an aldehyde. That's why we're doing these two together. The only difference between an aldehyde and a ketone is in an aldehyde, the double bonded O is at the end of a chain, and in a ketone, the double bonded O is anywhere in the middle of a chain. And if you notice, they give it a number, because it can be in different locations. It would be pentane, P-E-N-T-A-N-E. -E. They drop the E, they added own. So, uncondense it. And it looks like that. So now they're calling it two pentanone because the double bonded O 
is on carbon too. So now if we do these guys, doesn't matter if I number from the right or the left in this one, because again, the middle carbon would be carbon three either way. And then this one, it does matter. Because if I number it this way, it's two. And then technically, if I numbered it the other way, it would be three. So it does matter to a point. You'll see in a second. So let's name them. This would be three pentanone. And this would be two butanone. Or would it? Okay, so that's my question. Is the last one right? And it turns out the last one is not right. And there's a reason. If I put it here, I call it carbon two. If I put it here, I would just call it also carbon two. In other words, if I put the double bond O on this carbon, I call it one two. If I put it on this double bond, uh, if I put it on this carbon, it's one two. That's not a different version. And it can't be on carbon ones because then it wouldn't be a ketone anymore because it has to be in the middle. So guess what? This one, if you put the number on it, it is wrong. This one is just butanone because there's no such thing as three butanone. It doesn't exist. It's just two butanone counted from the other side. So be aware of that. And there's your condensed formulas. They shouldn't be too hard at this point. That's it for aldehydes and ketones.